This is a screencast of the Fundamentals of Atelectasis, sponsored by the Society of Thoracic Radiology. By the end of this talk, you should be able to define atelectasis, list four forms of atelectasis and what causes them, and identify imaging appearances of atelectasis. Simply put, atelectasis is volume loss affecting the lung. There's a whole spectrum of atelectasis, oftentimes minor, subsegmental volume loss. You could have collapse of a segment or of a lobe, or you could have complete lung atelectasis. But one important distinction, atelectasis is volume loss. It is not a space filling process, such as pneumonia, edema, or malignancy, where air spaces are filled in with something. We're going to cover four types of atelectasis. These are post-obstructive, compressive, dependent, or you may hear some people say passive atelectasis, and finally, cicatrization atelectasis. Regarding post-obstructive atelectasis, this simply refers to endobronchial obstruction and distal lung collapse. Other than that, it's pretty nonspecific. The image on the right side of your screen, there's a yellow arrow indicating an endotracheal tube, and what we see here is a triangular area of opacity at the top of the right hemithorax. That's the atelectatic right upper lobe. In this instance, this is presumably related to a mucus plug. So mucus plugging or retained secretions are oftentimes encountered in a hospital setting, especially in patients with poor airway clearance, patients who may be in the ICU on a ventilator, for instance. Mucus plugging can occur and can resolve pretty rapidly. Other things to consider, consider with post-obstructive atelectasis are foreign body aspiration and malignancy, including an airway, especially with unsuspected endobronchial obstruction in an outpatient. Here's another image of right upper lobe atelectasis. You can see this triangular opacity at the top of the right hemithorax. As the right upper lobe collapses, it becomes smaller, more opaque, and it moves up and in. And one important thing to recognize is the right minor fissure right here. So as the right upper lobe loses volume and moves up, the right minor fissure moves up with it. There's a clear demarcation between the right upper lobe and the right middle lobe and the right lower lung below it. Another important distinction or thing to recognize is elevation of the diaphragm. If you have enough volume loss, the diaphragm will eventually move up into the chest. Here's another case. We have a triangular or almost band-like opacity. This is right upper lobe collapse. The question you may be asking yourself in this outpatient is why? The corresponding CT image with contrast shows there is a right hilar mass obstructing the right upper lobe bronchus. So in retrospect, when you look back on the x-ray, you may wonder if you can see that. And there's some subtle convexity right here suggesting that this may correlate with the CT findings. All right, another case, left-sided haziness. We're suspecting left upper lobe atelectasis in this case. The left, hemi uh, left heart border, rather, is partially obscured. Here's the lateral projection. So what are some clues that can help us feel more confident? Well, if you look at the lateral, you can see there's this abnormal haziness. It's anteriorly positioned. This is what we saw in the frontal view. And then behind that is what we might think is relatively normal density, but there's a clear demarcation. And what we can see here is the left major fissure, which is being pulled anteriorly. This is farther forward than we're used to seeing. The other thing to recognize is the left hemidiaphragm. So on the frontal view, there's almost a tenting appearance. And on the lateral projection, you know it's a little elevated, even if it's not clearly distinct. You can see air-filled bowel loops beneath the left hemidiaphragm. This is higher than the right hemidiaphragm. Corresponding CT image for this patient, again, what we see, a left hilar mass with obstruction of the left upper lobe bronchus. All right, different patient. There's an endotracheal tube up top. We know this patient's on a ventilator in the ICU. Draw your attention to the cardiac silhouette, specifically the density of the, of the silhouette. And after a while, you may realize there's a triangular space that's a little denser than the rest. What we're seeing here is left lower lobe atelectasis. When lower lobes collapse, they tend to fold inward and they assume this triangular shape. You may hear someone describe this as a sail sign. 
Here's the corresponding CT image. We see the left lower lobe right here. Only one axial image here, but the left lower lobe is smaller than normal. And what we also see is crowding of normal vessels and normal airways as that lobe collapses down. All right, another patient. This is an inpatient day zero. Day two, another portable x-ray. Look at the clavicles. You know this patient's a little bit rotated, but you can also see this faint triangular density in the right lower lung. This corresponds to what you might expect the right lower lobe to look like, so you're starting to wonder if there's right lower lobe collapse. It's hard to tell just how much atelectasis is present because it's a portable view, there's a little rotation. It's tough to say, but if you waited two more days, you would see this. So the right hemithorax is completely opacified. Your assumption is that the complete, uh, the total lung collapse, the whole lung is down, and you also see the trachea, which is shifted a little bit towards the right hemithorax. Now again, it's a portable view, it's a little rotated. Luckily for us, we have a CT to confirm what we're suspecting. So if you look at this single axial view, just sort of divide the chest in half and consider the right lung and compare it to the left lung. And the right lung is smaller. Here you see the base of the right upper lobe, the right lower lobe. Both of these are completely airless. And one important thing to recognize is the airway. So at this level, we're at the bronchus intermedius. It looks like it's completely filled in with debris or mucus, especially compared to the left side, which is widely patent. The entire lung is down here. So given the complete lung atelectasis, we're going to assume that there's additional secretions and additional mucus plugging even more proximal to this level at the bronchus intermedius. Here's a companion case, just shows us complete left lung opacification, left lung collapse. Focus on the trachea, the mediastinal, and the cardiac silhouettes. Some of those things you can't see here, the cardiac silhouettes being pulled into the left chest because of all the volume loss. The other thing to recognize is the gastric bubble right here, higher than expected. We can't really see a discrete left hemidiaphragm, but we know this is elevated because of the gastric bubble. All right, let's change gears. Compressive atelectasis, that simply refers to compressive changes um, upon the lung because of something next to it. So something is abutting the lung, pushing it away. Usually this refers to pleural effusion. You can see it in instances of pneumothorax or really anything pushing lung away from it. Here's a coronal view, a large left pleural effusion. Focus on the left lung here, it's completely airless. So you have complete lung atelectasis, which is purely related to all of this pleural effusion next to it. Here we see a large right-sided pneumothorax. There's compression upon the right lung, which is demonstrating pretty significant atelectasis. And also there's some compression of the heart and mediastinal structures into the left chest. So there's a tension pneumothorax. There's a lot of pressure being exerted upon other structures by this air trapped in the pleural space. And this degree of atelectasis is perhaps best appreciated once the pneumothorax has been treated. The surgical chest tube's been in place, the air has been evacuated, the lung is now really well aerated and well inflated. And then you get a sense just how much of uh, volume loss or collapse really occurred on the right side. All right, dependent atelectasis, passive atelectasis. This is primarily talking about hypoventilation, so a poor inspiration. It doesn't imply airway obstruction, but you often see this in post-op patients or perhaps people who have a decreased level of consciousness or maybe they're very drowsy. People who've been laying flat for a long time can get atelectatic changes. Usually this is mild, but if there's enough atelectasis and volume loss, of course, it can be symptomatic. So here's a frontal radiograph. We can see some band-like, plate-like, maybe discoid atelectatic changes on the right side. You have to wonder if this patient were to come back and take a nice big inspiratory effort, a nice big breath, those band-like opacities should resolve. All right, so last type, cicatrization atelectasis. You may never hear that term again, but it really just refers to chronic volume loss. Scar down or fibrotic lung. This could be related to prior inflammation or infection or maybe post-radiation fibrosis. On this axial view, we see the left lower lobe. It's really small. It's opacified. And look at those crowded patent airways. The key to this type of atelectasis is that it's fixed. It's not getting any better. It's scarred down. 
All right, so in summary, atelectasis, it simply means volume loss. If you see atelectasis, consider the type, consider the cause, and remember the clinical setting is important here. So if you're looking at mucus plugging, a foreign body aspiration, or a new malignancy, you may be looking at post-obstructive atelectasis. You may be looking at compressive atelectasis related to adjacent effusion, or you may just be seeing dependent or passive changes related to supine position or a low inspiration. With imaging and volume loss, look for these changes. You should see lung opacification. You should see crowded lung markings. If there's enough volume loss, you may see movement of the fissure, the heart, or the mediastinal contours, and you may see elevation of the diaphragm. All right, so a quick quiz. The image on the left side of your screen, this is your baseline image. And now let's look at the image on the right side. This is two days later. I'm gonna tell you the patient's been intubated. There's an endotracheal tube right there. What's different? What's happened? All right, so let's focus on the right side of the chest. There's increased opacity at the right base or the right lower lung. I wanna look for the right heart border. I see a defibrillator pad in the way, but no matter how hard I try, I really can't see a right heart border. The other thing I'm looking for is a, a right diaphragm. And I'm not sure I see that either. You may argue maybe this is the diaphragm right here, but I'm gonna tell you that's not the diaphragm. Luckily for this person, one day later they were extubated. Everything seemed to return back to normal. So how can we explain what happened here? All right, I really hope you said atelectasis. So this is collapse of the right middle lobe and the right lower lobe. And this is related to mucus plugging of the bronchus intermedia. So think about what has been opacified on this two days later image on the right side. The right middle lobe, the right lower lobe, both of those are opacified. They're airless. There's no right heart border, no diaphragm. The only anatomic explanation is some sort of obstruction affecting the bronchus intermedius. This was a tough one. Hopefully it makes sense now. And hopefully this all makes sense to you. Thanks for your attention, and I wish you lots of luck.